This example is like problems 19 and 20 in the exam three review. Uh, we are looking at the birth rate in the U.S., which in 2020 was 11.99 uh, per 1,000. It's about 1.2 percent. Uh, researcher wants to determine if the birth rate in California is lower than the national average. So these birth rates are percents or proportions. So this is a hypothesis test of proportion. Uh, so we took a random sample of California residents uh, and it revealed five births here among 455 residents. Uh, can the researcher conclude that the birth rate is below 1.2%? We're using alpha as 0.05 and the p-value method. So first, uh, let's list our, our information here. So we're going to test against the 1.2%. So that is going to be our p0. So that's 0.012 as a decimal. Uh, took a random sample and we had five births among 455 residents. So a birth is a success, that's X is five. And the 455, that's our sample size N. And uh, then we're testing to see if the California birth rate is below. So uh, our alternative hypothesis is going to be that P, the proportion of births, is less than 0.012. If that's not the case, then we conclude that P is equal to 0.012, the national average. Part B, we're going to compute our test statistic. With proportions, you always use Z. Uh, our alpha value here is 0.05. And so our alpha over 2 is going to be 0 0.025. And so our z alpha over 2, which is our critical value for the uh, rejection region, cutoff for the rejection region, is going to be inverse norm of 0.975. Right, because this is the right area. So 0 0.975, 1 minus 0 0.025 is the left area. So we compute that real quick. So second variables, we're doing inverse norm, uh, 0 0.975, 1.96 to two decimal places. Our p hat is x over n. So our x was five births out of 455 total here and here, and 5 divided by 455 is 0 0.01098. So if you wanted, you could do 0 0.11, it's approximately. Because uh, this would round up to 0 0.11. Our test statistic, I included the formula for that. So our p hat is the 0 0.011 minus our hypothesized value is the 0 0.12. And in the denominator, square root, and we use the p0 in there, 0 0.012, 1 minus 0 0.012. And then we're dividing by n, which was 455. So let's compute that. So I'm going to do alpha y equal enter to get a horizontal fraction. 0 0.011 minus 0 0.012. Come down to the bottom. We need a square root. I'm going to do another horizontal fraction. Alpha y equal enter. 0 0.012 and parentheses 1 minus 0 0.012 close parentheses and 455 in denominator so negative 0.195 so it would be negative 0.20 if you round to two decimal places and then our p-value is the area past that test statistic. 
So let's sketch this. So here's our distribution. Sampling distribution, zero is the z-score of the mean in that sampling distribution. Negative 0.2 would be a little bit to the left. This is a lower tail test. So that p-value is the area to the left of negative 0.12. So we can use normal CDF to get that. So the left-hand cutoff down here, negative infinity, we'll use negative 10,000. Right-hand cutoff, 0.2 negative. And then uh, 0 and 1 are mean and standard deviation. So let's compute that. Second variables, uh, normal CDF is number 2, uh, negative 10,000. And then we've got negative 0.2, and everything else is the same, 0 0.4207. Now we can also get this using one prop z-test. Let's do that real quick. So stat, tests, and then we got to scroll down to... Five is our one prop Z test. Enter. Hypothesize proportion, 0 0.012. Our successes were five out of sample of 455. And we are testing less than, so I highlight less than P0. And let's go ahead and draw. So this whole blue area, that is our p-value, 0.4215. And we got 4207 here. So that's because we rounded off the negative 0.2. And negative um, 0.1981 was our z-value. And so we rounded to two decimal places. So that's why we're getting a uh, value here that's a little bit off. So the one we want to trust is the one from the one prop z test which is 4215 and our z score negative 0.1981 so there is our p value and uh, real quick here uh, let's use the higher uh, decimal place accuracy there and just confirm that p-value. So let's quit out of here. So if I go up here. Oh, so I had, uh, yeah, negative 0.1959. So let's use that. So let's uh, let's come back down here and Let's go ahead and use our extra decimal places. So I'm going to go to second variables. It's 1959. Uh, use normal CDF. So I do negative 10,000 to negative 0.1959. And that gives us 4223. So 4207 to 4223. Uh, and we got 4215, so actually a little bit over. So, and again, we're having round off error. We had rounded off the 01098. Let's actually, let's go ahead and try that. Uh, just so you can see that this really is round off error. So zero one zero, I'll insert zero one zero nine eight. So that gives us zero one uh, negative point negative zero point one nine nine eight. So if we do normal CDF here, And instead of negative uh, 0.1959, we're negative 1.998, I believe that was. 
Yes, 1998. And then we've got 4208, which is really close to our 4207. Uh, so it yeah, actually should be closer to the 4 point, uh, 0.4215. So both of these values, though, are greater than 0.05, which is our alpha. So p greater than alpha, we do not reject H0. So our conclusion here is that for our significance level, which was 0 0.05, so at the alpha is 0 0.05 level of significance, uh, there is not enough evidence. Because remember, you do not reject, it's not significant. So there's not enough evidence to conclude the birth rate in California is below 1.2%. So if you have to pick, just to reiterate, if you have to pick between your calculated from the formula value and the p-value given in one Prop Z test, choose this one if they're asking for what is the p-value because uh, that one does not have any round-off error. This has got round-off error.